You know, when you're in one of those moods where you really just don't want to do anything or you're going about doing something that you have to do and yet you cannot get out of it and you find yourself just whining and complaining and slugging through the process, wishing you weren't there, wishing you were doing something else. That happens to me all the time. Although over the years, I've learned how to practice shifting that perspective a little bit. Now, this perspective is not unique to Stoic wisdom. This comes from many different approaches. It's this idea of an attitude of gratitude, if you will, or shifting our perspective a quarter of an inch, as one of my mentors would always say. So take, for example, this video, I kind of dragged myself to the computer, if you will, or nudged myself forward. And I'm trying to implement today's practice, today's nugget of wisdom, turning have to's into get to's. Now, this doesn't mean that you disregard your agitation or that you ignore and pretend you're motivated when you're not. It's just, again, simply switching that attitude, that perspective, a quarter of an inch in the direction of where we want to be going, in the direction of progress, in the direction of more open, motivated energy. My name is Mike Stroh. This is the Starts With Me channel. I'm a therapist. I'm in long-term recovery from a variety of addictions and mental health problems. And this channel is all about helping you become a better version of yourself, increase your capacity for resilience and well-being. We are reading from the Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday. Today's reading is for July 3rd, and the title is Turn Have To Into Get To. The task of a philosopher, we should bring our will into harmony with whatever happens, so that nothing happens against our will and nothing that we wish for fails to happen. Epictetus Discourses 2. Point fourteen point seven. All right, to the reading. A long to-do list seems intimidating and burdensome. All these things we have to do in the course of a day or a week. But a get-to-do list sounds like a privilege. All the things we're excited about the opportunity to experience. This isn't just semantic playing. It is a central facet of the philosopher's worldview. Today, don't try to impose your will on the world. Instead, see yourself as fortunate to receive and respond to the will in the world. Stuck in traffic? A few wonderful minutes to relax and sit. Your car broke down after idling for so long? What a nice nudge to take a long walk the rest of the way. A swerving car driven by a distracted, cell phone-wielding idiot nearly hit you as you were walking and soaked you head to toe with muddy water? What a reminder about how precarious our existence is and how silly it is to get upset about something as trivial as being late or having trouble with your commute. Kidding aside, it might not seem like it makes a big difference to see life as something you have to do versus get to do, but there is a huge, magnificent difference. Okay, it may seem subtle, but I agree with that last statement of there really is a huge significant difference in our attitude, in the way we go about approaching life, in how we engage in the things that we are doing when we shift that perspective from have to to get to. I mentioned this briefly earlier. I want to go back to this point of this doesn't mean that we pretend things aren't annoying when they are annoying. This doesn't mean that we disregard reality, okay? That's not it at all. We can acknowledge the resistance. We can acknowledge how much we don't want to do the thing. We can honor that little whiny voice inside and simultaneously remind ourselves that this is an opportunity to practice our stoic virtues, okay, or our mindful virtues, or our ethical virtues. This is a moment of opportunity. And I know it sounds cliche, and it is. And that's okay. You know, 
all of these practices, all of these wisdom traditions, their practices, they are reminding us of what we know or of the teachings we have been taught or the knowledge we have gained. The wisdom in the teachings is bringing it into existence from moment to moment. And that's where all of this wisdom and knowledge comes to life. What do they say? Knowledge without works is dead or faith without works is dead. I don't know, whatever it is. And it applies to this stuff too. You must practice these things and embody them in moments. So why don't you get out a piece of paper or just contemplate for a moment? What are some of the things that you are whining and complaining about that you have to do? I have to do this. I have to do this. Write all those have tos down. And actually that it was in the reading there. Can you make a list of get to's? <laughs> Can you try to, whether you believe it or not, just come up with some reasons as to why these get to's are more appealing or more motivating. So for example, I get to record these YouTube videos. I get to live or work, excuse me, in this beautiful office that you see here. I mean, it's amazing. It's beautiful. I get to be here. I get to work with wonderful people. I get to I get to be present as people come to realize things about themselves and the world and their patterns of behavior that are beautiful examples of enlightenment and insight and change. I get to participate in all of this. In my past life as an addict, I didn't get to do much other than chase that hamster wheel. I mean, I had lots of crazy experiences, whatever, but... I was living in a dark place. Now, when I am relatively balanced and practiced in my routines and in my sanghas or my groups of practice, it does get easier to live in this get to world. So that is your mission for today. Contemplate that stoic wisdom or really just that common knowledge from wisdom traditions and see if it helps. Okay, one little bonus tip here would be if you're contemplating and practicing and noticing, and then that little judgmental mind goes, oh, this is bull crap. This isn't helpful. Why am I doing this? Ha, notice that too. Notice that as the ego's way of trying to control and manipulate your mind into its own control patterns. That's a really helpful tool. Notice, notice, notice. And I hope you found this helpful. My name is Mike Stroh. This is the Starts With Me channel. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Consider supporting us on Patreon. And without further ado, I wish you the best. Take it easy. Peace out. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content. And otherwise, have a great day. Peace out.